Welcome to Lab 4. So for this one we're going to be working with uh, creating users, deleting users, modifying users, as well as groups, and then talking a little bit about um, services. So let's get started. So what I've done is uh, I've started C7 host and, um, excuse me, <clears throat> I've started C7 host and uh, one of the first things we ask is that you take a look into this file called um, password. So let me do that. I'm just going to type in less see password and what you see here is a list of the users that are installed on this machine um, so for example we have root over here um, you'll notice that everything is separated with colons the very last argument here is the type of shell that root is using which is bash we're using bash for the most part there's other you know types of shells out there if you ever want to experiment you know feel free uh, most of them will have the same functionality of bash but maybe with some additional stuff that you can do um, so take a moment and uh, go through and just try and understand each of the fields that are there uh, this by the way is the home directory so that kind of stuff um, you also have a user ID here and you'll notice that we have quite a few users here um, so obviously quite a few more users than there are normal human users, right? So user isn't always just like a human that uses the computer. Um, so part of the lab will be to investigate a little bit about that and see what all of this stuff means. <laughs> okay, so for the next uh, couple steps, we're going to make sure that we're working in the CentOS 1 VM. Um, I guess I got a note that uh, installed some software updates since the last time I did a video, so that's great. Um, so what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be setting up some uh, new users. And I'm gonna, just going to go into the terminal here, make sure I'm logged in as root. And so the command that we use for this is uh, user add. And you can go through, I encourage you to take a moment just to read through the man pages. Um, but uh, we won't worry about that too much. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, create a new user called OPS2351. And we'll go through and just to prove that it's there, we can do this and we can grep for it inside that uh, uh, file that we talked about before and you can see that it's been created there you can see that the user ID is called 1001 uh, so yeah interesting patterns there um, now we can take a look inside home and see if there's been a user uh, directory created for that user and you can see that there is so some distributions uh, you might have to add another option to have that created for you, but uh, for CentOS 1, it's the default. Um, I know for Ubuntu, that's one of the distros where uh, if you just type in user add, you'll create a new user, but you won't necessarily create a new home directory for them. Okay, just something to keep in mind. So the next thing I'm going to do is add these dash M option, which will create the home directory. And I'm going to do this for OPS 235-2. And we can do the same thing as before. I'll grab this. You can see it's created. You can see that it has a user ID of 1002. And I can go and take a look at home. And again, we've created a you know home directory for this user. OK, so to delete users, uh, the command is user del, and I'm just going to do that for uh, the user we just created. So you can do this again. So the directory is still there, and that's something to keep in mind. And you'll notice the user has changed from you know the user that was there before OPS two three five underscore two to one zero zero two, and I can go back over here and take a look. So that user is no longer in the password file, okay? Um, so to get rid of that empty 
home directory for a user that does no longer exists. Uh, we can just do rmrf home ops235 underscore two. Before I run this, I'm just going to make sure. Is this what I want? Yes, it is. Okay, we'll go ahead. I just do that because it's very easy to wreck your system whenever you're doing an rmrf command. Okay, so to demonstrate another way to use the user del command, I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm going to try and remove the ops235 underscore one user. I'm going to add the option of dash r, which should get rid of the home directory. So I can run this, I can cycle up, take a look again, it's gone. Um, so that's probably the better way of deleting stuff when you want to get rid of everything. Um, to demonstrate the next stuff, I'm just going to go ahead and user add dash m ops235 underscore one. So I'm creating this user all over again. So we'll do that. And then we're going to ask you to give them a, a password. So the command to do this is called password, or I don't know how to pronounce it, but there it is. Um, since we never set a password for this user before, it's not going to ask us for the old password. It's just going to get us right into the new password. So I'll give it maybe pass or something easy to remember. Bad password. The password is shorter than A characters. Okay, so let's do pass one, two, three, four, five, or something like that. Okay. Okay, so it might complain if you're giving it a very simple password, but uh, for the most part, it'll just let you go with you know your your bad choices. Um, so now that we've done that, we can take a look at home again. We should have something called OPS 235 underscore one. And so let's take a look at what we've got actually inside there. Okay. When I run simple LL command, I don't see anything inside. So let's, uh, let's do dash a so with the dash a we can take a look at hidden files and you'll notice that we have a bash rc file and all this stuff created for us uh, hopefully you remember from uli 101 uh, bash rc bash profile are two ways that we can basically uh, customize our shell or you know create aliases and shortcuts and things like that um, interesting that those are created for us for a brand new fresh user right well let's talk about that a bit Okay, so we talked about sort of like uh, this bash RC and bash logout and something for Mozilla, so I guess some sort of Firefox <laughs> config file or something like that was created for us um, without us really having to do anything. So let's take a look at something. Uh, what we're going to ask you to do, or well, let's take a look at inside this uh, directory first. It's going to go into Etsy scale. And maybe what we'll do is add the dash A option there and take a look at what we've got. Um, so that is beginning to look familiar, right? So let's do this. Let's do touch Etsy scale. And um, I'm just going to add a, an empty file called foo. Okay, so that's been created. Um, now what we can do is we can go and do a uh, user add for OPS 235 underscore 2. So let's do that. And we get some sort of option. We get some sort of message about a mailbox file already existing. Okay, whatever. Uh, let's create a password for that uh, new user, right? Okay, doesn't like it because it's too simple, but I don't care. So there we go. We've created an OPS 235-2 user. If we take a look at home, we can see a lot of what we had before. And um, if we actually take a look inside that new home directory, 
um, you'll notice that this uh, empty file called foo got created. So the takeaway from that is that um, we can specify some default files and directories to be created for each new user. Um, and the template for all new users is located in this location scale, basically. So it's like the skeleton of all new users. So the next thing to show about uh, users is uh, we're going to basically um, add two new commands. Uh, this one is going to be, what I'm actually going to do is um, I see that uh, we have this uh, change age, or I don't know how to, I don't know what the command actually stands for. Let's find out. Change user password expire information. So change age or whatever. I'm not really sure. So I'm going to issue this command. And um, instead of using the 2018, I think that's probably out of date. So what I'll do is um, eh, I'll do the end of this month. So I'll do something like that. And I'm going to give us our first new user. OK. Uh, so what this is going to do is basically lock out this user or remove this uh, user account um, once we reach this time, which is, you know, in the future. Uh, so this might be helpful if you're working at a company with a lot of um, co-op students that might be coming in and out and, you know, security is fundamental. So you definitely don't want a lot of um, empty user accounts accessible for, by people who no longer work there. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is uh, give this new user uh, a name. So I'm just going to use new name, whatever. And I'll do for OPS underscore two. Okay, so that pretty much covers it for users and stuff like that. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to close this terminal. Um, it's popping up with that warning just because I'm, I switched user to the root. Uh, what I'm going to do is log out of this user here. Yeah, log out. And uh, what I'm going to try to do is log in as one of the new users that was just created. So you can see, you know, uh, these two users over here. I'm going to log in as this guy. Use that password that I already set. And once this comes back up, Once this comes back up, um, I'm going to just open a terminal. And yes, once again, software updates have been installed. Uh, interesting that we go through a whole, you know, configuration, a uh, bunch of screens again. I want to turn that off. I don't care about Google services. You're ready to go. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, get started. I don't need to. I already know how to use GNOME. All right, so let's go to terminal, and um, yeah, let's, go, let's do this in a different file. Let's do um, let's do a utility called uh, gedit or something like that. Um, I'll go to accessories. Well, I would have assumed it would have been one of these. I'll just do text editor. Right, so I don't know. I'll just uh, create a quick message over here. I'm going to save this as something called uh, maybe information.text. Right. Okay. I'll get rid of this because I don't really care right now. <coughs> so, uh, if you take a look at the home directory, the one that uh, I well, was, you know, the, the, the the default location when we just start a terminal. Um, you'll notice that foo is there, and you'll notice that information.txt is there. You can just add it, there it is. Um, and you'll notice another thing. So you'll, under, you'll remember from ULI 101, um, this is your user, and this is the group. So we're going to talk about groups here. Um, so by default, um, we create a user and we create a group with the same name. 
Uh, we, we don't necessarily have to do it like that. We can do other things. So for example, uh, let me switch users to root again. And um, I will create a new group called uh, welcome. Now, um, the location of both groups is, or the basically the um, configuration information about groups is located in a following file called group, funnily enough. You'll notice again that there's a lot of groups that are created um, that are not necessarily like, you know, human created groups, stuff like that. There's one for root. Um, there's stuff for all kinds of things. And you get that at the very end, you'll notice there's no PS1, there's no PS2, and there's a welcome group. And they all have um, sort of group IDs starting with, the, with that 100 pattern. So now we've created two users and we've created one group. And uh, there's another piece of the puzzle which is um, basically adding people to groups. So um, I'm gonna issue this command user modify. Um, and the two options here are basically going to add these users to an existing group. So the group exists because we just created it. And uh, let me just do this. And now if we go back into here, what we should see, if we go to the very bottom here, is that OPS235 underscore one and two are part of the welcome group. So the next thing that they're gonna ask you to do is um, go through a practical example uh, using a sort of like workplace type scenario. Um, but I'll let you work on that. Hopefully you've got enough to complete the practical example. Okay, so moving on to uh, system services. So we talked a bit about this. System services are basically um, things running in the background that we don't necessarily uh, want front and center when we you know log into a machine but you know we hope that they are running in the background so one example of this would be security right um, one thing that we have uh, <laughs> one type of security that we have running on our machine here is a firewall and the name of our firewall is IP tables you remember lab two, part of lab two setup was to get rid of firewall D and install IP tables and get it running. Well, let's just verify that that's still the case. Um, so all these commands are gonna start with system CTL, system control, or however you wanna remember that, um, followed by sort of a subcommand. So with system CTL, um, I wanna issue the command status. I just wanna see what's going on. And if I run this with no other uh, arguments, I'm gonna get a whole long list of the uh, services running and I don't really wanna read this. So what I'll do is specify that I'm mostly only interested in IP tables. So when I run this, you get a lot of information. Um, hopefully if everything's running according to plan and there's been no errors, like uh, you'll see that it's active uh, you'll see that it's green um, and you'll also see up here that it's been loaded and enabled and you'll also get some um, of the most current um, like uh, log messages um, so you can see that it started and everything seems to be working just fine um, so that's great now the other thing that you can do with uh, services beyond just like looking at them is stopping them, starting them, enabling them, and disabling them. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Um, I'm going to take this command here, I'm going to modify it a little bit and just say stop. Okay, and then we can take a look at it here and um, you can see that it's got some messages here that we've stopped it basically. Um, let me make that a little bit easier to read. Let me clear the screen and then take a look at it again. And you'll notice that it is inactive, it's dead since 14 seconds ago. 
Um, the next thing I can do is disable IP tables. So I can do that. And you'll always see a message saying that it's created, it's removed a SIM link. Um, so hopefully you remember about uh, symbolic links or soft links, but uh, basically when you are disabling or enabling services, um, you stop or you prevent them from starting on boot up, okay? That's what disable will do. Uh, on the other hand, enable will make sure that when you start the machine, you're also gonna be starting the service, okay? So starting and stopping just sort of, um, they relate to right now, but uh, they're not persistent. If you wanna make changes persistent, you'll have to enable or disable. So part of the thing about assignment number two is you're gonna be working with a web server. And um, every semester that I've been teaching, there's been maybe, you know, some students that have forgotten to enable their web server. So they work on the thing, you know, late into the night and they bring it to class the next day and they swear everything was working, but when they start up the machine for the first time, it seems like everything's broken or everything's gone. And um, inevitably, it's like you forgot that one step where you just have to enable the web server. Um, and that usually fixes the problem. Anyway, uh, just something to keep in mind. So what I'll do is I have disabled it, but I really do want IP tables running because we're going to need it for the, another lab. So I'm going to enable it again. You'll see that you know it creates the sim link. And I'll just start it again. And then you can see what it looks like. Sorry, not stop. I want start. OK, there we go. And it's always good practice just to take a look and make sure that everything's you know worked out the way you expect it to. And I can see that it's started and running again. And if I reboot this machine, um, I should be able to um, run this status command again and see that IP tables started with the machine. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is run levels. So I'm going to run this command run level and um, you'll see that it says N5. Um, so 5 will basically, uh, base, five, N5 means um, that we're running a graphical mode on this machine, which I can tell because I see graphics on it, so that's a dead giveaway. Um, but if I run something called uh, something like init3, um, what you'll see is um, the graphics all go away. And now I'm stuck uh, just working like a, um, you know, a sysadmin or something like that. So I can log in, I can do things just fine as before. Let's make sure that, uh, just to, just to review, this is going to make sure that IP tables is running and it is and it's fine. Um, so, so yeah, I can still I still have all the functionality that I really need, uh, but I just don't have a graphical user interface, which um, is more secure in a lot of ways. So a lot of times servers won't even bother with it. Um, if I want to get my um, if I want to get my graphics back, what I, I can do is type in start x. So x is the um, graphics server, I guess you would call it. Um, Without X, we cannot generate graphics on the screen. So by starting X, uh, we should make it so that the nice colors and things come back. And it might take a while. But anyway, um, so on CentOS 1, it's totally fine if we um, just, uh, if we keep the graphics. So what I'll do is I'll turn init back to five. Um, and what that means is the next time I reboot, I'll get back my graphics. I won't have to start X manually each time I log in. So here you go. After a few seconds of, uh, you know, logging back in, I am able to get back to my screen and run init once again and I should be good to go.
So once I get back in, uh, what I'm going to do is just run level again, and we can take a look at how that's changed. So was three, now it's five, and that's what you should that's what you should want. Uh, so again, that should about cover it. Um, in the rest of the lab, they're going to ask you to create a uh, script. And we talk a little bit about case statements and uh, get opt. Um, so this is one way that you can start uh, creating options and make your uh, scripts a little bit more professional feeling, um, a little bit more like the uh, Unix standard. Uh, but I'm going to leave that for you to work on. Um, time for a new backup, guys. Time for a new backup. Um, feel free to download the check script. It will be checking that you've created users, that you have a run level set to five. Um, and that about covers it for lab number four. Make sure you take a look at these questions.